Masturbation is the ultimate form of self-pleasure, but a question I get asked all the time is how much is too much? Well, I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm going to explain three ways that you can potentially harm yourself with masturbation. If you're new here, you will know that I'm very pro-masturbation. It is a ultimate form of self-pleasure, and it is safe when done appropriately and a great way to relieve stress, sleep better, and has a number of health benefits. If you're curious to learn about those things and debunk those myths you might have heard about masturbation, make sure you check out my video on seven myths of masturbation. But today I'm going to talk about three things that could potentially hurt you if you're doing them during masturbation. So the first one is something that was coined called traumatic masturbation syndrome. And this was first coined and described by Dr. Lawrence Sank in 1998. And this was described as the habit of masturbating in a prone fashion. That means lying on your stomach or having your stomach facing a bed, a pillow, or a hard surface. And patients who develop traumatic masturbatory syndrome or traumatic masturbation syndrome complained of symptoms of low sexual desire, inability to orgasm, or having issues with erections. In fact, there's very little data on this, but we see it anecdotally in practice that some patients do experience this. There was a study looking at almost 2,600 men who described themselves as having premature ejaculation. And in order to identify if there were some habits related to them developing premature ejaculation, they asked them a number of questions, including what their masturbation techniques were. And they also asked these as open-ended questions. So a lot of surveys that you get reported on in the literature are closed and it mean they give you like four or five options to choose from but here they ask them like tell us about your masturbation practice and what they found was that people who describe themselves as having traumatic masturbatory behaviors like having masturbation in a prone position or rubbing through their clothes were more likely to have issues with erections or erectile dysfunction the next thing is something that's commonly described as death grip so what exactly is that? Well, there's no real medical term for death grip, but it's been described as having a very firm or aggressive grip on the penis during masturbation. And so in medical speak, we describe this as habituation. So basically what happens is your body gets used to having a certain amount of force or vibration or whatever it is. So for women, it may be using vibratory toys or for men, it may be using a very firm grip and your body gets used to that. And so it becomes more and more difficult to climax or have enjoyment or the same sensation from your partner because you can't get that same level of stimulation. And it can be actually like a very very vicious cycle. For example, in a man who uses a firm grip during masturbation, they can start become having reduced sensation in the penis. And then they may need an even firmer grip to reach climax. And it becomes this vicious cycle as the grip needs to get firmer and firmer in order to get the same sort of stimulation. And so this has been described actually as what doctors call idiosyncratic masturbation method. So an idiosyncratic style is essentially a style that cannot be replicated by a partner. In this case, for a man, it's a female partner's mouth, hands, or vagina, or it can even include a fantasy that is very difficult to replicate when with a partner. So in a small study of 500 men who had what we call delayed ejaculation or difficulty achieving ejaculation or climax, about 37% described having what we call idiosyncratic masturbation practices. It can be more than just a grip, right? It can be the certain speed that you're using, the certain place or position, for example, as we describe prone masturbation, or it can be a certain item that you use every single time that can't be replicated in partnered sex. And unfortunately, this can be very difficult to talk about with your partner. But before you start blaming yourself, it's important to realize that there are other causes for changes in sensation in the genitals for both men and women. And it's important to rule out medical causes. So for men, it can be a decrease in testosterone. It can be due to certain medications like antidepressants. I've made a video about that as well as videos about testosterone. It can be due to certain medical problems like diabetes or having injuries to the area. It can also be 
be due to having drugs on board or alcohol because those things can depress the nervous system, making it hard to feel the same sensations you would when you're not under the influence of those things. Also, if you're doing a lot of sitting, particularly during COVID, a lot of people were sitting in their home offices and not moving very much. Or if you're doing a lot of extensive biking, that has also been shown to decrease sensation down below. So what do you do if either of the first two things we talked about are happening to you and you know it's not a medical problem? Well, number one, you wanna give masturbation a break. Try to stop for a couple weeks and let your body adjust to normal sensations that you would normally feel. And when you resume masturbation, you wanna try different modalities. I tell a lot of people to incorporate lubricant in their masturbation because it still allows for very nice sensation, but then also allows for more slipperiness and less uh, intense friction that uh, that you may be using previously. You may want to avoid things like pornography and try to avoid the types of fantasies that we're using previously to get stimulation or get excited visually or mentally. And you may want to actually try to use internal fantasies rather than relying on external fantasies that you may be reading or watching. And lastly, you may want to use hands instead of things like toys or vibrators that can provide a much stronger stimulation. Also, it can be helpful to see a sexual therapist to talk about things like sensate focus. And so what that is, is actually focusing on the feeling of touch and pleasure when you're with your partner without the expectation of penetrative sex to kind of focus your brain on those things rather than the performance or the stress of not being able to reach climax. The last thing that can be damaging, particularly to men, is if you have very aggressive masturbation techniques, which may involve some bending of the penis, that can lead to things like penile fractures. Any sort of bend that occurs to an erect penis can lead to what's called a penile fracture. I made a couple videos about penile fractures, but essentially they are a break of the lining of the erectile bodies of the penis that then cause your penis to, sometimes you'll hear a pop and, a, and your penis will get very swollen and painful, and that is a surgical emergency and must be treated immediately. Also, if you're masturbating with a less than erect penis, you have to be careful because that can sometimes cause injuries to the penis as well, where you can get micro fractures or micro injuries that can lead to plaques and eventually cause curvature of the penis. So otherwise, if you're not having any of these problems and you're having a normal, healthy masturbation practice and you're not having any problems having sex with your partner and you're still able to enjoy your partner as well as enjoy yourself, then by all means, please go ahead and continue masturbating. It is healthy and wonderful way to express your self-pleasure. But back to the question everyone's always asking me, how much is too much? Well, I wish I could tell you there was an exact number, but there's not. If you find that you're masturbating you know, multiple times a week, but you're still going to work, doing all the things you need to do, being a good partner, being a good parent, whatever it is, and it's not interfering in your day-to-day -day activities, and it's not encompassing large amounts of time that you could be doing something else productive, then it's totally fine to continue as you are. If you're starting to realize that maybe you prefer masturbation to other things, like going out with your friends or hanging out with your partner, then it's probably time to take a deep look at how often you're masturbating, how you're masturbating, what techniques you're using to masturbate, and really check out how you can modify those and have a more fulfilling and enjoyable life. And if you're curious about pornography, make sure you check out my video on the pros and cons of pornography. And if you're suffering from issues where you have problematic pornography, use check out my video on porn addiction. I hope you guys found this helpful. As always, we're gonna take care of yourself because you're worth it.